Hello everyone, it's Kathy and welcome back into my craft room and here on my YouTube channel. Today we're going to play with an old but um, goodie. It looks like this has kind of been revitalized. This was very popular, I guess probably about three years ago. A lot of people were making these and it's called a bay window card. And um, I've got both of mine flattened out. These were two different designs that I saw. This was the first one I saw and it has a small edge here and then this tucks in like that but you it doesn't look even when you're looking at it this way you've got this long place over here and a skinny place here so I wanted something I mean it's a very cute card it's got panels inside and out and I thought it was cute but it really wasn't what I was looking for in a bay window so after doing some investigating I found this design and I like this one much better as you can see it looks like a bay window you've got an even amount here and evenly distributed here and I just I like the looks of this one better still comes down just like this and you still have a nice little place here to tuck your piece in for it to sit up still very mantle worthy uh, I love this so this is the one that I'm going to concentrate on today this is what I like to call as my uh, prototype um, maybe we'll do balmy blue this is the pack of paper that I want to use and I'm going to use this raindrop piece from this and this is the um, rain or sh rain and shine and it actually couples with our playing in the rain stamp and die which is a very cute set so let me see um let me look and see i'm thinking for the base of my card i'm gonna want the balmy blue i think the balmy blue will, will work for me so let me grab a sheet of balmy blue And we can actually get two cards out of this so we don't have to fret over you know wasting paper you will cut this in half on the eight and a half inch side and I'll show you exactly how we're going to do that pull out my trimmer and what we're going to do is we're going to put this into our trimmer at four and a quarter so your piece is going to be four and a quarter and we are going to just slice it in half and that gives you enough for two cards because you did slice it right down the middle. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my Simply Scored scoreboard. And the reason I'm gonna do this is I think it'll make it a little easier for you to see exactly how I'm gonna score this. So with your 11 inch side up to the very top, take your stylus that comes with your um, Simply Scored uh, score tool and we are gonna score at a quarter of an inch. Now make sure you get all the way over here onto that quarter. And I like to hold my paper and kind of get my uh, score tool into that groove and pull it down. So you're gonna do one and a quarter and then you're gonna do four and a half. So four and a half right there. And I know this is gonna seem very silly, but it's really not. Flip it over. So like I said, you just scored here. Just turn it and flip it over. You still have the quarter inch here, but we're gonna score in three more places. So we're gonna score at one and a half, right here. One and a half. And then we're gonna score at three and one fourth. And then we're gonna score it right in half at five and a half. Just like that. That's all we need to do with this piece. So what we're gonna do now, let me move my Simply Score tool out of our way, and we're gonna work on this and see if we can get some score marks um, in here. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fold, our card's gonna actually be like this. So we're gonna fold this one down and this one back and down and down so it's going to be something like that and then we're going to fold this little one up and what I would do at this point is I would grab my bone folder and I would give it a good crease so then when you turn this over like this you're going to see how our 
card is going to be a bay one day. We're still going to need a couple more pieces. We're going to need another piece here that's going to be one inch by four and we want it to be the full length, so four and a quarter. So I have this other piece that's four and a quarter, that's already four and a quarter. I'm going to cut a one inch piece off of this. Now I said earlier, let's see if I got a scrap of balmy blue over here. I should because I was playing with balmy blue yesterday. Yeah, we do. So I'm going to save this piece because this will make another card. So I'm going to take this piece and it is four and like it's four and a half no four and a quarter and I'm going to cut a one inch strip off of this and then we're going to cut some of our designer series paper so I'm going to just lay this in here and I'm going to put this in on this side of my trimmer because you have one and a half inches over here this allows you to hold on to your paper over here and slice your piece off so there is our other piece of balmy blue we're going to need. Now we're going to do some decorating on the front of it, but we'll get to that once we get the actual mechanisms for our card together. Um, I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to crease down this really tight because this is going to get glued down so it doesn't move. And then I'm going to come back and I want this one nice and crisp. So I'm going to do that like that and, this, and of course the same way with this one just like that and now you can see how everything really does start to take shape all right to decorate my side pieces I want I need three pieces to go across here that I want to be the same so I'm going to choose this piece of um, raindrop and so we need three and a half let me double check my measurements. Yeah, I think three and a half. Let me double check that with my ruler. Yeah, I think three and a half is what we need it to be across the top. And it needs to be four inches wide. So I think I'm going to do it like this. This looks like the rain's coming down. So I'm going to cut this to four inches this way. And then we'll do three and a half that way. So four inches this way. So I'm going to turn it this way because I want that side. So I want it to be at four inches. Four and three and a half this way. And once you get that piece cut, now all you're going to do with this is you're going to cut one inch off of each end. I'm going to cut this piece off, and then I'm going to move it to this side and cut one inch off. Very simple. These are going to go on these sides right here. This one is going to be perfectly fit to go here in the middle. So if you use those measurements and take an inch off of each side, you will get, you'll get exactly what you need here. Now we do need some pieces to go on our sides, which are going to be here and here. So we're going to need a piece that is three quarters of an inch. And it needs to be by four. So I'm going to do three quarters of an inch, and I think I'm going to cut, I'm going to do it from this side. And I'm using the other side of this, which is that pretty pink. And they're like little flowers, which is really pretty. So I'm going to cut three quarters of an inch off there. And another three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch right there. And then we can cut both of these at the same time off at four inches and see that's just about four inches so it's just going to be a smidge see what i mean when i said a smidge it's just barely two little pieces so that works out perfect so those are all of our pieces so let's go ahead and get the bases of our card put together and then we will um 
I'll show you how we're going to decorate it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to glue these pieces down on here. Now if you wanted to, you could put white behind this if you wanted it to pop, or you could go and pull the gray and put gray behind it. If you do that, I would take about an eighth of an inch off of these so to give yourself a little bit more of a border. I'm just going to glue these down. So I'm going to take just some liquid glue, and these are your one inch strips. So I'm going to just put glue all over this, like so. And I'm going to glue this down right about here and press it. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Some glue on here. Just like that. And then I'm going to lay this down right about there. Make sure you get it in the middle. That is important when you're putting layers down to try to make sure your borders are nice and straight. So that's good. And now we're going to do this last piece. And just a lot of glue all the way down on both sides of that. And then I'm going to lay this in right here in the middle of this middle panel like that and press that down. Now we're ready to do our little side piece. So well, let's go ahead and do this one first. And this one, we're just gonna take and swiggle some glue. I always say swiggle. <laughs> just go ahead and apply some glue to the side of your, the back side of your paper. And then this is gonna go in just like that. Now the other piece is a little bit different, so let's um, pay attention. Remember this one, little one inch strip that we cut? That's gonna go on right here. But we're also going to put this piece on it. Let me double check and see, make sure I, I knew how I did that. Yeah. So we're gonna take and glue this piece on the center of this, just like that. Center it right in the middle, top and bottom, side to side. So I'm going to do the same thing, glue onto this. This is just a really quick card that you can put together in just no time flat. And, uh, and it, makes a, it makes a statement. I think it's a very beautiful card. Um, and you can choose any color paper that you want. Now, in order to put this down, I'm going to go ahead and glue this down right now before we go any further. So what you're going to want to do, this flat flap, that's underneath the piece that you've already uh, put to. You want this to be glued down completely flat. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to put glue all over. Now here you could use tear and tape, you could use your uh, stamp and seal, whatever you like the best. You can use whatever. But all you're going to do is just bring that over, hold it flat, and I like to take my bone folder and just press it just to give myself a good, a good um, adhesion, just to make sure that glue gets in there nice and, and good. So that is down now. So now we can take this one and we can actually sit this right here on our edge. That looks like it's a little bit longer. So, hmm, I'm gonna snip using my scissors just a tiny bit off of this end. I must have miscut this. Let's see if that works a little better. Yeah, that's better. That's much better. So what you want to do is you want to decide where you want your stopper to be. And I want mine right about like that. That looks like it's nice and even. Bring this over. Something like that. So now I know that this is my stop in place. So I'm going to hold that and grab my Stampin' Dimensionals. There, and then I'm going to put a Stampin' Dimensional and I'm going to use the little edges and bring them right up to that edge. Just like that. Not overlapping it, but just enough so it butts it. Now I'm going to do the same thing down here at the bottom. I want another one that's going to go right here. And then I'm going to grab one more and put it right here. And then I'm going to grab two more. I'm going to put one here 
and one here and then what's going to happen this is going to sit on top of this and that's going to give us that lip for that to go under so I fold this back let's go ahead and pull these um, backers off of our Stampin' Dimensionals like so and then I'm going to bring this back over and then I'm going to set this down oops you don't want to set it down until you're ready I'm going to leave just a tiny border on the other side Not quite where I want it. And you see what I did? I got some paper on those um, little stamping dimensionals, but that's okay. Just take and put a little wet glue on top of them. And then that will make it where you can put them down just like you want them. I think that right there is just about perfect. So I'm going to press that down, give it a good press, and get my pen back in my glue. And now I'm going to give it another press. And as you can see, there is our bay window card. Easy peasy. And now we can go ahead and start to decorate, which to me, this is always the fun part. Now, I love, love, love these little characters. And I think we have a die that will cut that one out with the umbrella, the little fox. And I think he'd be so cute playing around out there in the rain. And this is the one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up where I can actually grab, let's see, it goes like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best to get my little fox out of there without disturbing too much of my paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come, I want those flowers too. I might put those on if we have room. So I'm just going to come up like so and I'm going to cut this out like that. And now I know I'm going to need to use my larger um, die machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this over top of him and try to get it nice and straight just like I want it something like something like that and then I'm going to use my little post-it flags y'all know I love these things for holding my dies in place and I'm going to put maybe three on here and then I'm going to bring out my embossing plates. I'm going to go ahead and put him on here and then grab my machine. And this is my stamp and cut and emboss machine. It's it's a biggie, but not I mean it's not super big. A very compact machine. Let's see if I zoom y'all out a little bit. There we go. You can see it fits comfortably here on my desk. Um, and when you open it up, you have a nice flat bed to put your, um, your pieces on. So since we've already got that in there, I'm just going to go ahead and slide that in and then start to crank. Now you can see how easy this is to crank. I mean, it's going through like butter. Love this uh, stamp and cut and emboss machine. And the good thing about it, it folds up like that so it doesn't take up a big footprint. If you remember the big shot, that thing was humongous because it was long and uh, it took up so much space. This one is much better. And I have a big shot and I've never used it since I got this one because I just love the way this one works. It is a dream machine as far as I'm concerned. So now let's go ahead and pop out our little box and he's so cute and I think he's going to make a real statement on the front of our card and we're going to find a sentiment as well 
this and let's see if we can find I was thinking of cutting one of these little flowers out let's let's try it and see see what it looks like when I trim it out so I'm just gonna go in like like so and I'm gonna do like a little bubble cut around the flowers I'm just gonna kind of go in and out around that little blue doesn't have to be perfect you just want those flowers to be gorgeous I'm going to cut down this way to give myself, so I can get my scissors up in there. And I'm going to continue to come around that leaf and down and around and around. And I think we're going to be able to get this out pretty well. Now I'll probably trim it up a little bit more, like especially right around here. I want to round that off just a little bit and come in underneath there. like so and then cut like that and maybe just a tiny bit like that let's see how those flowers look right here mm, you know I'm not too sure we even need the flowers I might save those for another card I wasn't sure how they were going to look on there and after I put them on there it was like eh, I don't think we need those he's cute with his little umbrella and only thing we need is a sentiment. So I think I like rainy days are better with you. So cute. So I am gonna grab out rainy days are better with you. We're gonna grab a scrap of basic white. Not a problem. I've got plenty of scraps like this in my scrap bin. I'm wondering if I want to use this or if I want to use a die. I have fallen in love with this one that's in the um, All That die set. This was um, He's All That. That was uh, in the annual catalog. And I didn't put a sticker on that one. Uh, but this will definitely work in here. So I'm going to stamp it again. I think this is going to be much prettier on here because it's going to, I think the white's going to really make it pop. Love that. That's much better. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off about like that. And instead of grabbing the big machine again, since I've got something small enough to run through the small one, I'm going to put those plates up and I'm going to grab my little plates. Let me put this. So turn that over like that. Put that in there. Now I am going to um, tape this down and I'll tell you why. Anytime you're positioning a die around an, an image or even a sentiment, you always want to tape it down so it doesn't move when it runs through the machine. Um, that keeps you from getting a wonky um, die cut. And nobody likes wonky die cuts. Let's see, I think they can do this one this way. Move these dies out of our way. Grab my little bitty, bitty, bitty stamp and, stamp and cut and emboss machine. Love this one because it's tiny. I have found myself going to this one more and more um, for small jobs like this. Works. Yeah, that works. So just turn your top plate over whenever that happens, and then you should. But you can see this plate has started to warp quite a bit, and um, I, I don't know why. But anyway, it's all right. So now, I think I'm going to run that through my little emboss uh, my little um, embossing folder with the raindrops now that one I cannot run through this machine because it's a bigger folder and it will not go through it's too wide to go through our itty bitty so that's why I always say that if you are in the market for a die cut machine and you can only afford one my suggestion to everybody is to get the bigger one because you, you're not limited the little one will limit you to what you can and can't do. So um, anytime you have a large embossing folder like this, you're not going to be able to run things like this through it. 
So I'm just going to sit that down in there like so. And I'm going to grab my big one. And open it up. Grab my plates. Now for this particular one, this is not a 3D embossing folder. You're only going to need your number one plate and two number three plates. So I'm, I've got one number three and I'm going to get my cover plate and put this over top and this should run through perfectly. That's the other thing I love about this machine. There's never any guessing as to what goes through or when it goes through. Your sandwiches always work perfectly every time and I love that. I absolutely love it. Now we have raindrops on this. Can y'all see that? Isn't that cute? Love, love, love that. And they're embossed nice and deep. And we can bring this up and put it right here like this. And look how stinking cute that card is going to be. So what I want to do is glue this down first so it's right there at the top. And then we can let his little umbrella come up right on top of that die like that or that die cut so let's go ahead and get our plates out of our way and my embossing folder back over here and let's go ahead and bring everything over to the front and for this I'm going to use some I'm debating on whether I want to do those those little drops in blue but I think I'm going to leave them like they are and I'm going to take my stamp and seal and I only need just a, a piece right there in that middle area. I don't need it to go all the way across because then my piece will not come up like I want it. So I'm going to very strategically center that right about there. Give it a press and then this little guy is going to get popped up on some dimensionals. So let me grab my dimensionals. Oops, left out one of my plates. I like to keep those together. So we're going to take some Stampin' Dimensionals and put on this little fella. Because he is so cute. And we've got some Stampin' to do on the inside as well. And I'll show you the dimensions we need for our inside as soon as we get finished with the front. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I think that's going to work. So that's on there. That's not going anywhere. So now let's go ahead and pull off our backers off of our Stampin' Dimensionals. Just like this. Probably need to zoom y'all back in just a hair. Something like that. And I am working because I had, um, I, know, I know it's been an issue with me staying in frame. And I have tried several different things to rectify the problem. And I have another... Uh, thing that I'm doing the software that I use to do my lives with I'm actually viewing this through my computer so I can constantly see where I'm at so I'm hoping that this is going to make a difference uh, in how uh, everything is going to look for y'all um, going forth because I want y'all to have see what I'm doing. It does no good for me to do these videos. And I was I was talking to a friend of mine, and I told her I said it is as fr as frustrating for me as it is for all of you, whenever this happens because I don't know it until I put this into my uh, computer the the little disc card that I plug into my computer, and that's when I see it. And it's too late for me to fix it. It has to be fixed in the recording and once you make a card the only way to fix it if it's out of frame is to trash your card start over from scratch and redo it so sometimes if it's just one or two little items that really it's not that mon monumental i'll just go ahead and, and let it um, fly but i'm hoping that this is going to make a big difference in uh, your viewing pleasure so i'm going to measure inside and it looks like we need it to be about three and a quarter by four so three and a quarter yep we got it on this so what i'm going to do is bring my um bring this back out so we're going to cut this at four this doesn't look even 
Okay, there's four. And then we need this to be three and one fourth. It's not wide enough. Okay, let's get another piece. I've got plenty of white scraps, y'all know I do. So three and one fourth. Let's go four again first. I know I got it in this one. Okay, there we go. And then we'll cut this off at three and one fourth. I think that's what I said. <laughs> so there's that. Now we've got a cute little piece to put inside, and this can go in just like that. And we have a place to stamp our sentiment. So let's see what we want to put on the ins inside. Rainy days are better with you. I want something for friendship, and I want it to say... Um, This one, full of love, it says always grateful for you. And I think that would be perfect on the inside of this one. So let's go ahead and grab that one. And it says always grateful for you. So I'm going to put this right about here. And again, I want to stamp it in that beautiful rich black ink. So I'm going to get my, my stamp and scrub. And if you have not checked out one of these, you are doing yourself an injustice. Now I've already gotten stamp cleaner on here. I'm going to reactivate it with just a little bit of water. So here's my stamp and scrub. You have one side over here for cleaning and this side over here for drying. So I'm going to reactivate it by just squirting just some water on it. And then I can bring this stamp over and clean it. Just like that. And now I can go ahead and pull this one off and we can go ahead and load this one up. So y'all know I like to put these on a grid line and pick it up. And then we're going to grab that ink again. And I'm going to ink this up really good. And we're going to come right in here. Get that to my left so I don't get my hand in it. And I'm going to put this right about here because I want to do a little flower or something down here. So we're going to do Always Grateful for You. Very good. And then what about the little flowers that we cut out earlier? How cute would that be right there in the bottom corner? Or maybe over here. I love it. See, I told you those would come in handy. So I'm just going to take some liquid glue and put liquid glue all over this. And then glue that down right here in that corner. Just like that. Let me clean my stamp again. And then we'll glue that in and this card will be done. Just think how many of these you could make. Birthdays, um, anniversary, thank you cards, get well cards. I mean, you could just really go to town and knock these out because you, it doesn't take a lot of product to make one of these, which is always uh, a plus. So now we can just put that in right there and Put glue on here like this. And then we can glue that in just like that. And the liquid glue does give me that little bit of wiggle room that I love. And then press that in. And then when you get ready to mail this, you can mail it flat like this. And if you want to, you can enclose a little note to tell them that it's a bay window card and then instruct them on how to tuck that little side in. Very easy little mechanism to work. And because you've already folded this up, it shows very easily that it needs to do something here. So just a little tuck like that. And is that not the cutest little card ever? I love little critter cards and I know that most of you do and I thought this was just a great way to showcase our 
um, bay window card and you could do this with so many different stamps and dies I mean it is endless now and if you wanted to go back and and put uh, these on you would cut another piece of this just like you did here three and a half cut it cut an inch off of each side and glue them in here and then that middle piece will go right there be really cute to do it with that paper but I'm going to leave it like that for now. I think it's absolutely adorable. You'll have to let me know in the comments if you like this card, if this is a style card that you would like to make. And as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in Heaven. He is worthy. So until we craft again, may God bless you and keep you. And if you are interested in any of the supplies that I use to make this card, please visit my website. It'll be listed below or go check out my blog. You'll see pictures, a PDF tutorial showing you how to make this card with all the measurements and pictures. So until then, until we craft again, take care, be good, and be blessed. Bye-bye.